Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Delicious Cooking Series. This video is the second part of the dining table etiquette video that I uploaded a couple of weeks ago on the channel. Now I promised in that video that I was going to share with you all what you should do and then what you shouldn't do when your food arrives and then how to identify the different cutlery sets, the glassware and the dishware as well. Now I've gotten a lot of feedback from some of you who have watched the first video. Your gratitude messages, your appreciation messages are really really so kind and then all of you who took the time to also share some more table etiquette. I read it all. I have also learned a thing or two from all of you as well. And I'm going to say thank you, thank you, thank you for it. If you haven't watched the video yet, I'm going to put a link in the description box down below so you can check it out. It's a must watch as I share some table etiquette that you should master so that you can have some confidence when you dine at a formal or an informal dining event. So yeah, um, you sh definitely should watch that video so that you can join up with I think you should go and watch that one first and then you can come and continue with this one so click the link in the description box down below to watch it okay all right without further ado let's just get started so I have my table all set up for a restaurant style dining and also if you like to set up your table like this at home um, one thing I would say is that you shouldn't feel overwhelmed when you you get to a table and then you see a setup like this there's no need to feel overwhelmed. I'm going to walk you through the process of identifying the different cutlery, the glassware and the dishware like I said earlier and then also show you how to use the different cutlery and the glassware and dishware as well. It's pretty simple if you just pay very close attention to me as I walk you through the process. So if you visit very high-end restaurant, the very first thing that a waiter does when your food, your meal is about to arrive is bring you a warm damp towel to wipe your hands with. So you ensure that I have one here that is still very warm and damp. So just wipe your hands thoroughly with the, with the towel like so and then hand it back to the waiter who's going to then take it away and then bring your meal but if peradventure um, there is no towel given to you to wipe your hands clean you can use your hand sanitizer just to rid, of, rid your hand of any excess debt that you might have on it so that it doesn't affect what you're about to eat so you can use your hand sanitizer and then if you don't have a hand sanitizer and you feel like your hand is super dirty and you need to wash it you can just get up and excuse yourself on the table and go to the restroom and just wash your hands really clean because it's really bad to eat with very dirty hands okay so that's the very first thing and so the very second thing i'm going to talk about is when your meal arrives you have a table set up like this and then in front of you you have your table napkin so what you do the very first thing you do is you pick up the napkin like so, you open it up and then you spread it on your laps, like this. Now this will help catch any food drippings that will fall on, fall off your cutlery as you, um, as you are eating your meal. Please, by all means, do not put your napkin here like this. This is wrong and this is very raz. Okay? I mean, I mean, what is this? I'm judging you, yes, you. <laughs> Don't do this. Put your napkin on your lap because this doesn't even make any sense, really. Because it, when the food drops from your cutlery, it's still going to drop on your clothes. So what's the point? Just take your time and put the napkin oops, on your laps. Just spread it on your laps. Do you understand that? Yes, yeah, so that's a very important point that you must note at this time. So place your napkins on your laps in preparation for the arrival of your meals, okay? Still on the napkin, if you want to excuse yourself from the table, maybe you just want to go um, use the restroom or apply your makeup or whatever it is you want to do off the table and you know you're returning to the table, all you have to do is just take the napkin like so and then just place it on your seat like so and then you just get up and then you excuse yourself anyone who sees the napkin on the on the chair would definitely know that you are coming back to sit on the chair and if you're done with your meal and you're not coming back to the table just pick up the napkin and then place it on um, just beside your table um, beside your plate your dishware and your cutlery just like so and anyone who sees this will know that you are not returning to the table 
just simple basic stuff you can do with your napkin to indicate whatever it is that you're doing okay all right so the next thing we're going to do now is talk about the cutlery the dishware and the glassware that is on the table now like i said before you do not have to feel overwhelmed by what's happening right here the situation happening right here um but um i'd say to you that if you know how to use the thing the items on the table you definitely know when you take a look you definitely know how many cost meals you'll be served you'll be served at that dinner event by just looking at what's happening on the table so from this table setup i can tell that a three cost meal will be served at this table and i'll show you how to identify this so one, the number one rule that you must use whenever you are eating on the dining table and you see all of this set up like so is to always use the outside in rule. Now what the outside in rule is, is whatever meal you are served first by the chef or by the restaurant or by your host, always ensure that you use the cutlery on the outside first and then walk your way in. So now this whole setup is just assuming that you are invited for a formal dinner. I'm also going to give the general rule for when you actually are the one ordering the meals and you know exactly what it is that you're eating. Um, so the very first meal is the appetizer and for my appetizer I'm going to be having a very light soup. And then I already know that for my soup I don't need a fork or a knife, I'll be needing a soup spoon and the soup spoon has been placed on my right hand side like the spoon should go and it's the um, cutlery that is at the outer, outer part so like I said remember to use the outer outward in rule so I'm using, I'm going to pick up the spoon like so and then I will dip it into my into my soup and this is how you take your soup when you are at the restaurant just place the soup on the, the spoon on the side like so and then just slightly gently just slide it at the side of the plate now this is going to remove any excess dripping underneath the spoon so that it doesn't spill all over the place and just literally just take your spoon and enjoy your soup oh that's a nice soup guys gosh <laughs> this soup tastes so nice so it's pretty simple dip your spoon in the soup gently slide it at the side of the plate to catch the excess dripping and then just as simple as that for your appetizer you may also be served a vegetable salad or a fruit salad or whatever other kind of salad that you have and when the salad is served on your plate definitely know that the next set of cutlery that you would use are the cutlery on the outer part which is my salad knife and my salad fork now so this is not a regular salad fork a regular salad fork is a lot smaller than this but this is what I have um, available and that's what I'm going to be using but note that a, a regular salad fork is always smaller the salad has been placed on my table and what I do next is I just pick up the cutlery that is on the outer part which is my salad knife and my salad fork and I just go in and dig so for the salad I just place the fork down like so and then use the knife to just cut out whatever it is that I want to cut out and then use the knife to also push things in if I want to push anything into my fork the fork and knife method actually really works best when you're eating like um, leafy vegetables that you have to cut into not sh not shredded vegetables so that's why I'm showing you this method and you just put your salad in your mouth and enjoy um, but by all means I always say to people if you're not comfortable eating with a fork and a knife please do away with it it's not a must that you eat with a fork and a knife you can just go ahead and eat with your fork just the fork alone and if you're not comfortable eating with your left hand if you're a righty you can as well just go ahead and eat your salad just with the fork and with your right hand that too is also proper table manners there's nothing wrong in it don't do what you're not comfortable doing okay so ditch the fork and knife if you're not comfortable with it and just use the fork alone to enjoy your salad okay cheers <laughs> By the time the main meal arrives, you'll be left with two cutlery sets and that's the uh, main meal cutlery, the fork and the knife and then the dessert cutlery, the fork and the spoon and that's over here so it obviously means that you're going to be using what is left on your 
on the side of your plates to enjoy the main meal, which is the main meal fork and knife. And the main meal fork is usually really large. They're actually the largest cutlery set on the table. And all you have to do is just pick up the fork and the knife, like so, you hold it in your hands like this, and enjoy your meal. You place the fork on the meal. We're assuming that this is the main meal for today's um, three-course meal. <laughs> okay, so just place the fork on what you're about to enjoy and then use your knife to just cut things through. So the fork acts as a stabilizer. It stabilizes whatever it is you're, you are about to cut and then the knife is what you now use to actually just cut it through like so. And then afterwards, you use the fork to lift things up and put in your mouth. So that's how you cut, that's how you enjoy a piece of meat with your fork and knife. And if for adventure it's rice or pasta, just place the, the, the fork on the, place the pans of the fork on the plates like so, and then use the, the knife and you just put some food on the fork like this. In this, in this for rice and beans and other stuff um, where that doesn't require cutting, the knife acts as a packer, I like to call it a, a food packer. So you just use it to pack some food on your fork and while your fork just rests on the plate and then you just pack some food onto the fork like that and then you enjoy. And by all means guys, when you're eating with a fork and knife, if you must eat with a fork and knife, don't hold your fork and knife like this, like, <laughs> leave it alone, it's not. <laughs> you guys are married. I've seen a lot of people who hold their fork and their knives like this and then they end up struggling. They end up struggling like, no, this is, this is wrong. You don't have to struggle. This is, this is wrong and you just only end up messing yourself, messing up yourself. So it's not a must that you must eat with a fork and knife. So drop the fork and the knife if you don't know how to eat with a fork and knife. And then if you want to learn how to eat with a fork and knife, it's pretty simple. Just hold gently, subtly, elegantly. Hold the fork, the handle of the fork, the handle of the knife, just use your index finger to just hold the back of the fork like this. Use your thumb and the other fingers to just grip it subtly towards the end of the, um, towards the bottom of the handle and then just use this to hold it gently. Same thing with this one, just use the other fingers and use this one to hold it gently and then just gently, gently just cut it. Gently. You're not fighting a war. Gently and eat it. Okay? But don't struggle. <laughs> it's not a struggle. <laughs> it's not a struggle. You might end up just fly having food fly around. Don't do this. You're not about to fight a war with anyone. You're not fighting with your food. Okay? Okay? Alright. I know you heard me. Thank you. When you're done enjoying your meal, the best way to signify that you're done is to place your fork and your knife in a 12 to 6 position or a 10 to 4 position like so. And when you're not done and you're still eating, just place your fork and your knife in this position. Never do this guys. What's this? Never do this. This is absolutely, absolutely, definitely wrong. Doesn't even signify anything. Okie dokie. <laughs> so I have this beautiful dessert in front of me. It's a fruit cake topped with some Greek yogurt and a cherry. Looks really pretty. All you have to do is just drag your cutlery, the dessert cutlery, to the size of the plate like so. And then you can use the fork to just hold on to the um, the, the piece of dessert and then the spoon to just simply just cut it up and then you enjoy it with your spoon like so but like I said before you don't necessarily have to use two cutlery at a time if you're comfortable with just one cutlery if it's the fork you're comfortable with just go in with the fork and just cut out a piece of the dessert like so and put it in your mouth Same goes for the spoon. If you're comfortable with a spoon, just cut out a piece of dessert like so. And put it in your mouth. 
put it in your mouth. Whatever you do, do what makes you feel more comfortable. Smell because usually at restaurants, you are served with bread rolls and butter when you just arrive, just to get your appetites up. And so to enjoy your bread and butter, it's really simple. Usually they will give you a butter knife like so. With this knife, you can just gently um, scoop out the butter. But first of all, how to enjoy the bread is you start by just cutting out or tearing out just a tiny piece and put it on your hand like so and then just use the butter just take a bit of the butter and then just place on the bread use the back of the butter spoon or the butter cutlery to just spread it around and then you can eat as simple as that don't do this for any reason <coughs> this is wrong don't do it it's a lot of food in your mouth at the same time. This is absolutely wrong and it makes you very uncomfortable because you may end up leaving a mess on your mouth. So the elegant thing to do, just cut out a piece of the bread, gently take some butter, place it on the bread, spread it around, and enjoy. This way you feel more confident and more elegant and you don't have a lot of food in your mouth. How cool is that? And then I've seen people who also do this. They use a knife and then just cut the bread in half. Let me just do it with my hand. They cut the bread in half like so, right? They open up the bread. I mean, <laughs> in the bush. And then they take the butter and then just lather it all over like, like this. This is already so wrong. It's creating a mess, not just on your hand. It's just creating a mess all over the place. And then they just close it up and then they start to eat it like this. This is absolutely wrong. And please, please, don't do it. Okay? Don't. Thank you. There are times you go to a restaurant or you go for an informal or an informal dinner and it's a local meal that will be served. Now, when the local meal is served, the waiter knows to bring a bowl of water for you to wash your hands with. Now, the reason you wash your hands is because you want to get it a little bit wet and, of course, take away the dirt from it. So, what you do is when the waiter approaches with the bowl of water, just gently put your hand down and just give your hand a, a good wash. And then, when you are done washing your hands in the bowl, just allow the water to drip gently don't raise your hand up just immediately you're done washing and then just start to splatter water all over that's absolutely wrong so just wait for the water to drip off slightly for about five to seven seconds in the bowl and then you take your hand out and you can start enjoying your local meal and by all means please do not put the bowl on the table when you're washing your hand it is absolutely wrong and should not be done if the waiter doesn't know some waiters are actually very unprofessional sometimes the waiters if the waiter doesn't know tell them to take it off the table and hold it in their hands for you to wash your hands while they hold it okay okay that's the right thing to do um, so that's that for the dishware and the cutlery now let's focus on the glassware now for the glassware you really do not have to worry a lot because it's the waiter that will be um serving whatever it is that he um the host once served at the dinner event or if you're the one that ordered it the waiter will give you the right glass for whatever it is you ordered but there are different glasses for different um drinks so for example your water glass is this globe right here that doesn't have a stem it's always like this so you can use this to enjoy your water you can use it for your juices and all that so this is what the water glass looks like if you're going to be serving some champagne this is an obvious glass this is what the champagne glass looks like it's really thin and it is slim and quite long and then the right way to hold your champagne glass is just hold it at the bottom of the stem like so it's the elegant thing to do and it just it just makes everything all right so you see how I'm sipping the champagne? <laughs> Let's assume there's champagne in here. And then the other two other glasses here for the white wine and the red wine. So the white wine glass, the way to differentiate it is that the red wine glass is always bigger and longer 
than the white one, wine glass. There is a reason to that. I hear that the red wine is supposed to have a more room to breathe, and I don't know the I don't know the science to it. I'm not into wines and all, but I know that the red wine glass is usually bigger than the white wine glass, and it's almost shaped the same way. The white wine gla glass is slimmer and it's a lot taller. So this is the these are the two glasses, and then the the way to hold. Your white wine glass is the same way you hold your champagne glass just by the end of the stem like so and you enjoy and then the way to hold your red wine glass is just you bring your hand closer to the top of the red wine I'm not sure why but it just looks elegant and it looks pretty when you drink I don't think it's advisable to hold the glass like this because doing this will put fingerprints on the glow of the glass which will get it really dirty very fast and that's not a very good look so avoid holding your glasses like this whether it's the water glass or the champagne glass or the red or the white wine glass avoid holding it like this there's a reason this is here and then for the water glass you can just hold it at the bottom like so you can you don't have to do this don't fight with the glasses okay and then for ladies, I would advise that when you are sipping from your glass, for example, if you're sipping from a, from a champagne glass, I would advise that you sip from one part of the rim. And the reason is, if you're putting on lipstick, you don't want your lipstick dabbing all over the rim. It gives a very dirty look. So you sip from one part you see I already have lipstick mark on this one when you're taking a second sip ensure you stick to that same position and sip again okay that way you have your lipstick stain on just one side of the glass and that's pretty much all about the glass there's no too much stress but like I said you don't necessarily have to stress about the different glasses if, you're, if it's hard for you to identify. The waiter is going to put the drink in the right glass because the waiter has been trained to know what glass or what um, drink goes in what glass. Do you understand what I'm saying? Alright guys. Okay, so that is that for the identification of the glassware, dishware and cutlery set on the table. Now there are some general rules that you must abide by, whether it is a formal dinner you're invited to, an informal dinner, whether you are ordering in or whether, it is, um, whether you are having a three course meal or a two course meal or a one course meal, there are some general rules that you must abide by on the table and I'm going to share some of them with you right now. The very first rule is do not stuff a lot of food in your mouth when you are eating. Take a little bit at a time. That way you are still able to hold conversations with your fellow diners without having to struggle with the amount of food that's in your mouth. The second rule is do not chew loudly. You do not want to irritate the people on the table with you as well as the people in the restaurant so chew quietly chew your food slowly when you start to hear yourself chew then you're definitely doing something wrong so just chew quietly and chew slowly the third rule is chew with your mouth closed don't chew like this oh, that's so wrong chew with your mouth closed and then when you chew with your mouth closed, you're chewing quietly. You'll find that you're, you'll chew a lot quietly. But when your mouth is open, that's wrong. Don't do it, okay? Okay? The fourth rule is, if you make a mess around your mouth while you're eating, simply just pick up your, your napkin that's on your lap and just gently dab around your mouth. Just dab. Don't brush the napkin all over your mouth like this, trying to wipe off stuff. Just gently dab your mouth with the napkin and then place the napkin right back on your laps. Okay? That's the fourth rule. The fifth rule for when you are eating on the table is ensure that you are seated very close to the table. You don't want to sit very far because when you sit very far, you will definitely do this. You don't come to meet the food, the food comes to meet you. 
But when you're far away, you always will be tempted to do this. So ensure that you are very, very close to the table. That way, you just pick up the food and the food comes to you. Do you get the logic? If you're far away like this and you have to eat something without it spinning all over, you have to come like this and this is wrong. So what you do is you move really closely to the food and you eat like that. That's the right thing to do. The sixth rule is do not put your elbow on the table when you're eating. The elbow is only allowed on the table when the food is not yet on the table. But once the food is placed on the table, it is absolutely wrong to put your elbow on the table because it kind of creates some a little bit of cluster around the table and just makes the table look funny. So your hand should always be by your sides like this while you eat and that's another reason why you have to draw close to the table so that you are comfortable enough to sit upright and just enjoy the food and enjoy the conversation. The next rule is do not drink from a bottle. If a bottle is placed in front of you, for example, do not drink from the bottle. That is very wrong and very tacky for both guys and girls. I've seen people do that and I'm like, why would you do that? There is a glass in front of you, right? Why not use the glass? They have the glass right in front of them, then they just pick up the bottle and then open it and drink from the bottle. That is very raz. That doesn't spell class and that doesn't spell elegance, okay? So ensure that you use the water glass in front of you whenever you want to sip from um, whenever you want to drink some water, okay? The last rule I'm going to share for when you're eating your meal at a restaurant or in your house is if the waiter doesn't pour your drink for you in your glass um, and the waiter is nowhere to be found, you can simply pour your drink yourself in the glass. But if you have someone who's dining with you at the table, pour theirs first before you pour yours, okay? It's just a sign of respect. It's a sign of cutsy and it's a sign to show your fellow diners that you actually value their presence on the table. So pour yours before you pour yours. So guys, that's all of the tips I'm going to share for when your meal arrives. And that's all the tips that I can remember right now. If you have any more that I may have missed, please kindly share with us all in the comment section. It's a learning experience for us all and I know that I definitely would want to learn um, some more tips that will help me feel more confident on the table whenever I'm having a meal with myself or with um, my fellow diner. Okay, I'll be looking forward to reading all of your comments. And if you haven't watched the very first video, the general rule for when you go to a restaurant or when you're invited for a formal or informal dinner, like I said before, I'm going to put a link in the description box down below, so be sure to check that out, okay? Alright guys, I'll see you next time with another tip or another mouth watering recipe. Until then, remember to be very kind to one another, love yourselves generously, and it's me, the queen of fun and fast cooking, signing out right now with a kiss. Take care guys. Bye.